the 18th lecture on the Gospel of Luke. Today, we will begin with Luke chapter 22. In verses 1 through 6, Judas Iscariot agrees to betray Jesus. The chief priests and teachers of the law made plans to kill Jesus. However, they were afraid of people more than God. Judas Iscariot sold Jesus for 30 coins of silver. At the time, 30 coins of silver was the price of one servant. Jesus was sold by one of his disciples at the price of a servant. In the passage, Judas Iscariot looked for a way to get rid of Jesus. In this way, people seek opportunities to sin. In verses 7 through 13, people prepared for the Passover. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Jesus sent Peter and John. The Lord sent them to prepare for the Passover. The disciples asked where they should make the preparations. Then Jesus replied. He said, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters. He will show you a large upper room all furnished. Make preparations there. God prepared the upper room in advance. The disciples would meet the room when they obeyed Jesus. When the disciples obeyed Jesus and went there, they met a man with a jar of water. They followed the man and made preparations in the upper room. The upper room belonged to John, also known as Mark. He offered the room in his house with faith. Then the disciples made preparations for the Passover there. In verses 14 through 23, Jesus established communion. Jesus wanted to eat at the Passover. Jesus wanted to offer himself as a sacrifice offering to God as the Lamb of the Passover. In verse 15, Jesus wanted to sacrifice his body for us. In verse 16, Jesus said, For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Fulfillment in the kingdom of God means that Jesus will be sacrificed as the Lamb of the Passover. The kingdom of God is a holy place. In verse 18, Jesus said, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 29, Jesus said, He would not drink the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you. Anew indicates wine. 
It also refers to spiritual gifts. It is the gift of spiritually participating in Christ's flesh and blood in the spiritual world. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1, it said, Buy wine and milk. Wine symbolizes God's spiritual gifts. Jesus said, I will not drink again, which meant that Jesus would from then on share spiritual gifts with his people. Thus, Jesus would not drink wine in this world again. Jesus established communion. The bread symbolizes Jesus' body. The wine symbolizes Jesus' blood. Hence, communion is a remembrance of Jesus' atonement. The Holy Spirit is with those who participate in communion with faith. Therefore, all who believe in Jesus spiritually participate in Jesus' flesh and blood. Yet, this does not mean that the bread is Jesus' body. Jesus' body is not in the bread. The bread only symbolizes Jesus' body. Jesus also said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. The blood that Jesus shed on the cross is the blood of the covenant of atonement. The wine symbolizes the blood of Jesus. That is why it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 29 that we must not eat bread and wine at communion without recognizing what they are. Eating and drinking without recognizing the body of the Lord is like eating and drinking judgment on oneself. Therefore, one must be spiritually mature to recognize the body of the Lord if he wants to participate in communion. Only those who are prepared to participate in communion must participate. We cannot participate in communion if we sin and do not repent. If we want to participate in communion, we must repent and be clean in spirit. We must fearfully and faithfully prepare to participate. Children cannot participate in communion because they lack discernment. Only those who are baptized can prepare and participate in communion. Judas Iscariot, who sold Jesus, was also present. However, Jesus gave Judas some bread and sent him out. Jesus carried out communion after he sent Judas away. However, the order is mixed up in the passage. Jesus died on the cross according to God's plan. However, there was woe 
on Judas Iscariot for selling Jesus. The difficulties and hardships that we believers encounter are all a part of God's plan. God allows this so that He could give us greater things. In verses 24 through 30, Jesus explained who the greatest in heaven were. Jesus was to soon die on the cross. Still, even in such a situation, the disciples argued about who would be the greatest in heaven. In the world, those who have power oppress those who do not. They control others with their power. Powerful people are known as benefactors. However, the great in the kingdom of God are those who serve. Whoever wants to be the greatest in heaven must be like servants in the world. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 20 verse 28. Jesus Christ served everyone when he was on earth. Jesus put down his glory and throne in heaven and came to this world. Then the Lord sacrificed himself to shed his blood on the cross to save many people from their sins. Jesus served many people and sacrificed himself. Hence, the Lord would sit on the right hand of God in heaven in the highest seat. When believers of Jesus serve others, they will be the greatest in heaven. The disciples were always with Jesus during his hardships. Therefore, they would sit and drink with Jesus in the kingdom of heaven. They would sit on thrones and judge the twelve tribes of Israel. All who are well trained will have heaven and authority. Therefore, we believers must grow in faith through trials. We must be trained and become qualified. Acts chapter 14 verse 22 says the following, We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. We must be refined through trials. We must also be gentle and equipped and not lacking. Our spiritual abilities and character must be built. Jesus said, sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. When we are trained and refined in this world, God will use us valuably in heaven. In verses 31 through 34, Jesus prophesied about Peter. Jesus said, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. This meant that the devil would test him. Just as wheat is thrown up into the air as it is sifted, Satan would test believers. Jesus said, But I have prayed for you, Simon, 
that your faith may not fail. Jesus hears believers' prayers, and God makes sure that believers' faith doesn't fall. Then why was Peter tested, and why did he deny Jesus three times? Did Peter's faith fail? When Peter denied Jesus three times, he immediately repented afterwards. This shows that Peter's faith did not fail. If Peter's faith fell, he would not have repented. Repentance is done with faith. Peter denied Jesus three times because his original faith was weak. However, when Peter wept and repented, his faith became stronger. In verse 32, Jesus said, When you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. The Lord told Peter to strengthen his brothers after he repented. Later, Peter repented with faith as the Lord said he would. Then Peter walked in faith before his brothers. Peter strengthened his brother's faith. In verse 33, Peter confessed. He confessed with determination. Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Peter was determined, but he did not have skills. Peter thought he was ready, but he was not. Peter failed. However, after he repented, he received strong faith. In verses 35 through 38, Jesus told them to sell their cloak and buy a sword. Earlier, when Jesus sent his disciples out to evangelize, he told them not to take staffs bags, or extra tunic. However, they lacked nothing. It was a peaceful time then. That was a time when they would be welcomed. They would not lack anything at the time when they preached the gospel. Yet, now it was a time of darkness. It was a time of hardships. It was a time when people wanted to kill Jesus. Therefore, they needed to take a purse and a bag. It was a time when they needed to take a sword with them. A purse is used to carry money. A bag is used to carry food or daily necessities. There is a spiritual meaning in this. In the midst of hardships and persecutions, they were to keep their faith and not let their white clothes get dirty. This means that we must prepare spiritual food to defeat whatever comes our way. In verse 36, Jesus said, If you don't have a sword, 
sell your cloak and buy one. The sword symbolizes God's word. This means that we must make God's word our life. God's word must become our strength. The cloak is something like a coat. This is not quite necessary. The cloak is worn to be mannerly and keep one's formality. Therefore, Jesus said to sell the cloak, which means that we must sacrifice the things we don't necessarily need. We must sacrifice the things that we do not need as we walk down the road of life. However, the thing that we must have is God's word. We must sell our cloak so that we can follow God. If we do not sell our cloaks, we cannot follow God's word. What must we believers follow first in the Bible? We must first pray. We must keep Sundays holy. We must give tithes. We must not eat food sacrificed to idols. We must not lose conscience of faith. Each believer must obey God's will for him. Jesus said, sell your cloak and buy one. This means that when we follow God's word, we must do not do it with all that we are. We must do it with all our hearts and strength. Now is the time when we need to sell our cloaks and buy swords. We must sacrifice things that we do not need in our faith. We must throw away things we need to throw away. We must cut out things we need to cut out. Then we must buy God's word. When we do so, we can grow strong and our spirits can grow. Then we can defeat all of the devil's schemes with God's word. If we do not buy swords, we cannot defeat the devil's schemes. Then we will fall in times of hardships. In verse 37, Jesus said, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Jesus quoted Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. The prophet Isaiah prophesied that Christ would be treated like a sinner and die. Jesus died like a sinner as the words of prophecy said he would. However, the disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. And they showed Jesus their swords. Jesus spoke of the sword in a spiritual way. However, the disciples did not understand but showed Jesus their swords. Then Jesus said, That is enough. This does not mean that the two swords were enough. This meant that what they understood 
about the truth was enough. Even though they did not yet know the spiritual meaning, it was enough that they heard Jesus' words. In verses 39 through 46, Jesus prayed on the Mount of Olives. Jesus had the habit of praying at the Mount of Olives. The Lord always went up the mountain to pray. In the last days, we believers must also go up into the mountains and to sanctuaries and pray. It is important that we form the habit of praying. The Garden of Gethsemane was located to the west of the Mount of Olives. Jesus' place of prayer was at the Garden of Gethsemane. In verse 40, Jesus said, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. We must pray if we do not want to be tempted. We cannot overcome temptations if we do not pray. Jesus was God's Son, but He fasted and prayed for 40 days and defeated the devil's temptations. The Lord also defeated the cross through prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. However, the disciples did not pray. Therefore, the disciples were not able to chase out demons even after they saw the transfiguration. The disciples also ran away when Jesus was arrested because they did not pray. Peter denied Jesus when Jesus was questioned because he did not pray. Here Jesus knelt down and prayed. The Lord prayed in a humble manner before God. We believers must also pray in this manner. In verse 42, Jesus said, Take this cup from me. This was not prayer asking God to take the cross from him. Jesus' purpose in coming to this earth was to take up the cross. Jesus told his disciples three times in advance. The Lord knew that he would die on the cross and then be resurrected in three days. However, there was no reason for Jesus to pray that the cross be taken away when he knew that he would die on the cross. Then what did Jesus mean here? This meant that he would take up the cross but he wanted relief from sufferings. The cup symbolizes sufferings. The Lord prayed, Yet not my will, but yours be done. This is a prayer of obedience. Father, if it is your will, that I receive all the sufferings of the cross, 
I will receive it all. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 7 through 8 says, The Lord learned obedience through prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. In verse 43, it says, An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Prayer of obedience to God's will is true prayer. God hears these prayers. God gives strength and help, and He answers these prayers. We must pray in spirit. We must pray with strength that comes from God. When Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, He prayed to overcome sufferings. It says Jesus prayed more earnestly. This was prayer that defeated the suffering of the cross. It says his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. This means that Jesus' sweat and blood were mixed. Jesus sweat. This was sweat from praying with all his heart and strength. When Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, he prayed with all his energy, all his strength, and with his life. Jesus' sweat was not normal sweat. It was sweat that was as precious as his blood. It was prayer of power that would give Jesus victory from the suffering of the cross. Jesus received the suffering of the cross in the place where he prayed. The Lord was able to overcome his sufferings because of power given to him by God. If we cannot gain victory with prayer, in the place of suffering, we cannot gain victory in the world. The disciples fell asleep exhausted from sorrow. The disciples were very sad about the upcoming death of their teacher. The disciples could not overcome this and could not pray, and they fell asleep. The disciples were overcome with sadness because their faith was weak. The disciples could not pray because they were physically tired. They eventually failed. Therefore, Jesus asked, Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Those who do not pray will be tempted. They will not defeat the devil. They will ultimately fail. Only those who pray hard can overcome temptations. In verses 47 through 53, Jesus was arrested. Judas Iscariot brought a crowd to arrest Jesus. Judas Iscariot led the way into the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas approached 
Jesus to kiss him as if he wanted to greet Jesus. This act of hypocrisy was loathsome. However, Jesus had mercy on Judas and spoke to him, Judas, why are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? In Matthew chapter 26 verse 50, Jesus said, Friend, do what you came for. Jesus loved Judas until the end. People attempted to seize Jesus with swords and clubs. At that moment, Peter took out his sword and cut off the right ear of Malchus, a servant of the high priest. Then Jesus said, All who draw the sword will die by the sword. Then the Lord told him to stop. Then the Lord touched Malchus's ear and healed him. In verse 51, Jesus said, No more of this, which meant that the disciples were not to defend themselves. There were four reasons for this. First, Jesus needed to be arrested and take up the cross as was written in the Bible. Second, this was God's cup for Jesus. Third, Jesus would complete righteousness through this. Fourth, all who draw the sword would die by the sword. Jesus taught every day in the temple. Before the appointed time came, they could not arrest Jesus. However, the time of darkness had come. Therefore, they came with swords and clubs to arrest Jesus. Everything happened according to God's providence and plans. In verses 54 through 62, Peter denied Jesus. Peter wanted to hear Jesus from the courtyard. Peter snuck into the courtyard of the high priest. Peter sat among people who had kindled a fire in the courtyard. The Apostle John knew the high priest. Thus, in John chapter 18, verse 15, John was able to go inside. Peter was merely an observer with others around a fire. In verse 56, a servant girl spoke to Peter. She said, This man was with him. When Peter heard this, he denied it before all who were there. Peter said, I don't know him. In verse 58, someone spoke to Peter a little later. You also are one of them. Then Peter said, I am not, and denied Jesus a second time. In verse 59, another man spoke with certainty. Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. In Matthew 26, verse 73, 
The man said, "Your account gives you away." It is likely that Peter had an accent of a Galilean. Peter denied Jesus three times. In Matthew chapter twenty-six, verse seventy-four, Peter cursed and swore to the people. At that time, Peter's own life became his idol. Then the rooster crowed. In Matthew chapter fourteen, verse seventy-two, it says that the rooster crowed twice. Then Jesus turned and looked straight at Peter. Jesus looked upon Peter with eyes of love. The light of Christ shone upon Peter. Then Peter remembered what Jesus said, and he repented. Peter was heartbroken. And went outside and wept bitterly. Peter was greatly upset that he denied the Lord three times. Peter hated himself, and he surrendered his life, wept bitterly, and repented. We can temporarily fall. Because we are weak. However, when Jesus encourages us, we can have hope, as we think about His words and then repent. Peter repented and stood back up, and he became a valuable worker of God. In verses sixty-three through sixty-five, Jesus was mocked. The soldiers who guarded Jesus mocked him. The soldiers blindfolded Jesus and beat him. Then they demanded, "Prophesy, who hit you?" Jesus was insulted in this way. The Lord was cursed at to receive the wages for our sins. In verses sixty-six through seventy-one, the Lord was questioned by the council. When the chief priests and teachers of the law gathered. Jesus revealed that he is Christ. Jesus did not reveal this to them to make them believe. The Lord testified that he is Christ. In verse sixty-nine, Jesus said, "But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated." At the right hand of the mighty God, Christ sits at the right hand of God. Then the people asked him again, "Are you then the Son of God?" Jesus clearly answered, "You are right in saying, 'I am.'" However, the chief priests used Jesus's words as evidence to kill Jesus. Here we will conclude the eighteenth lecture on the Gospel of Luke. Thank you.